I made a blind set on the edge of the water and this was intended for a bobcat that walks through here and walks the edge of this frozen beaver pond. I think I caught a mink and I knew that was a possibility. I believe that's a mink. It almost looks like a fisher. That might be a fisher. Hey buddy, you got good? Did it get you good? I'm gonna have to let this go. Fisher season ended. Oh boy. You know, just goes to show you really never know what's gonna happen when you're trapping. I wouldn't have expected a fisher to get caught in a blind set on the edge of the ice like that. It's a little fisher. I didn't even know there were fisher in here. We're gonna go back and see if we can get a good Y stick. One way or another, get this fisher out of the trap. I looked around for a while for a good stick with a fork to use to kind of pin the fisher down. And I couldn't really find one that would break right. But anyway, I ended up using these conibear setters and parafilm just to make it a little less harsh to make a really good one, which I think is a good idea. I've learned from experience that uh, getting a good tool to, to use going into this and taking the time to do that is better than trying to rush it. Uh, I actually have trap setters this time. I don't have a catch pole, but I think I've got a pretty good set of tools. So this, we're gonna give it our best shot. I think we'll get her out. Stop. Come on.
I'm sorry. I'm trying to help you. Come on. Stop. No. I'm gonna get you free. Go. Oh my God. Fishers are just, they're nimble, the Mustelids, you know? I, I kept trying to put that V on his neck and he was good at dodging me. He would bite the stick and just not let me get it around his neck. And then he was good at getting out when I got it around his neck. And for a while there, I was grabbing him by the feet, pinning him down three different ways. I didn't even really get to get a handle on both coils of the coil spring. I got one all the way loose. And then he was pulling and he felt the give and, and he was able to just pull it out with his strength. So I'm glad he, I'm glad he had the inclination to do that because I don't think he would have let me get both hands on those coils. Holy shit. I need to buy a catch pole. I mean, it's worth the money. My arms are like jello. It felt like an hour. That was exhausting. I can't imagine how exhausted he must be. Or she. Long live the fisher. Breed, have babies. Have babies. More. All right, guys. Let's hope that wasn't the last catch of the season. I'm gonna let you go for now. You know what though, guys? It just occurred to me that Fisher is running right toward my blind set. And just, just because it's the right thing to do, I'm gonna make sure he didn't go get caught again. Holy shit, that would suck. That fisher went right to a prominent den site. Right, right in there. Kind of interesting because in my head I was like well he's running kind of towards my blind set but you know there's a killer den that way gray foxes use it porcupines have used it in the past I've seen a coyote camp out there for a night things definitely use the den and the rocks over there and I was like you know I wonder if he'd wonder if he knows about that den I wonder if he's gonna go right into it and it's just kind of fascinating, you know, leave it to any of these wild animals. 
They know the spots, they know the forest. And a lot of these den sites are used by everything. That fisher immediately thought, I'm gonna go to the closest good den site. And trust me, that is right there. Here in about 50 yards, pretty much a straight line to it. That tells me that fisher knows that site. He's been there before. Maybe he's stayed there for the night. Maybe he's been there hunting porcupines. Or maybe they just have that generational instinct, that intuition, I don't know. But might put a trail camera out in front of that lodge. That'd be kind of neat. And see how he, see when he comes out, how long he stays in there to heal and rest. And also how he's looking when he comes out. He dragged his foot in some spots, but he definitely walked on his foot. He, she, he walked on his foot too. There's a little blood, but I don't think his leg is broken. It's sore though. So we'll put a trail camera out there and see what happens.